thank you for having us here today. This is, this is so fun. So Michelle, why don't you tell everybody how we met? Well, on Instagram, years and years was it ago, Instagram? it really okay. was. Okay. Yes, and just living local and being a gardener that I, I'm following my icon and, <laughs> you know, I mean, pretty much everything, all things garden and design. Well, she got my attention because of her sense of style. You know, you, you guys are so sweet and you send me lots of gifts. See, I don't solicit them, but you guys do <laughs> send me lots of gifts. And one of the most novel, intriguing gifts that I ever got was your matches, your decoupage matches. And you guys know that I have a big thing about candles, taper candles specifically, and just beautiful matches are the kind of the accoutrement of candle lighting. And I just love that. So today, Michelle is going to show us how she makes those. We're gonna do a little bit of a tour of her garden, maybe inside her house, and just kind of see what magic she can share with us. So what do you say? Let's do it. Let's do it. Well, just to give you guys a little bit of context, we're in an absolutely beautiful wooded area in Edmond, Oklahoma, which is a suburb of Oklahoma City. And you are very, very close to where I grew up. Um, at least my junior high and some of my high school years. And this area is just wonderful because you just really feel like you're out in the country. Yeah. You come down this wonderful winding drive, which you tell me has a story. It does. So when we moved into the property, the driveway was not there. It was gravel and we wanted to put it in because the first time I had to take the trash can to the road, <laughs> heavy full of things on that gravel i said no this is not going yeah. to happen <laughs> so we put the driveway in uh, because it's wonderful but also because it makes it easy get the trash cans to the road easier. it's both it's both aesthetic and yeah. and practical yes. and i love the fact we won't go into it too much but i do love the fact that your grandparents grew up in the house just down the hill yes. and when your boys were at home they would go down and help your grandparents yes. and and I love that. And you said your mom has now bought that house. Yes, heirloom so. properties all around. Yes, sure. yes. I, I love that. I love the extended family concept of, of all of that. And I also love the way that when you approach your house from the carport area, the the path to your front door mimics the winding of your driveway. And, and as you round the corner, and approach the front door, it kind of looks like a state park. I have very much of a beautiful state park or national park vibe when you come up here and you see these, these wonderful wooden pillars on your front porch and all of the stone. It's very, very, it's very, very indigenous to Oklahoma. And I, I love it. Lots of, um, you were telling me these are atlas cedars, a weeping atlas cedar, Arizona cypress. It's yes. just all. All, all tough, all tough, yes. Oklahoma, Oklahoma tough, in addition to the gravel. Okay, well, we're not gonna keep you guys waiting anymore. Can we go inside? Yes. Okay, yeah. let's go. Well, another thing we bonded over, I think, is our love of nature and the intrinsic beauty of just natural things, whether it's flora and fauna or, or you know, skulls or any, any of that kind of thing. I think we just bonded over the inherent beauty of nature. And you've got lots of representation of that in your home. And when you came to the cottage to visit, you showed me some of the pictures and I immediately had the vapors. And <laughs> thought, I need to come and see. So this wall right here, first of all, as soon as I saw it, it screamed Monticello to me because it is very, very reminiscent of Thomas Jefferson's home, Monticello, in the entryway. Tell me a little bit about your inspiration for this. And I was inspired on our trip to Scotland this last uh, year. And we stayed at uh, the Fife Arms, which is this beautifully amazing hotel that is just beautifully designed. And when I came back, I already had a few pieces but I knew I wanted to do a larger collection and focus mainly on the type of deer that are around the area. We do not have roe deer, so all of the European roe deer heads are European and from Austria and Germany, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but a lot of the other deer are whitetail, which we have in our local area. Mm -hmm. And I try to do things that yeah. are They're indigenous yes. to, to so Oklahoma. It was How did you question. source most of them? Um, online. Online? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and make deals and, yeah. you know. 
and just collect as much as you can. Yeah. Well, they're beautiful. And interestingly, the other thing that we were talking about, the Fife Farm, I'm going to Scotland in June, and my kids had just come back from there yeah. and had also stayed there. It's right near Balmoral. Yes. And so we were talking about a number of the things that you saw there that really spoke to you and really influenced your decor in terms of plaid and natural things like this that you use to decorate the interior of your house. And I just, I really love that. Now, as a warning, you guys, there's just so much to see. I'm trying to do that. Yeah, there's just so much to see that we're going to try to make some sense out of this. But first of all, when you come in, your vista, your focal point is through these two doors that open up out to the pool area and to outside and the more gorgeous uh, old cross timber, I guess, mm -hmm. cross timber, black oak mm -hmm. uh, forest that is very, very much a part of Oklahoma and a part of Edmond. And it's just outside her door. And then how would you, how would you describe your decor, your aesthetic? I see definitely notes of William Morris here in both the fabric on your settee and also on the shades. How, how would you describe your aesthetic? I would describe it as if I like it, I do it. Okay. <laughs> okay. If that is that's a good I term. Yeah, aesthetic. I think, yeah, I think that's a great motto to go by. I, I'm inspired um, constantly by other designers and other individuals and by nature. And I just kind of go with what is, um, feels good. And, and then also trying to find a bridge between my husband's minimalism and my maximalism <laughs> and so believe it or not this is a bridge to that because i would probably be a little bit more maximalist if it were not and he for... might be a little bit more minimalist absolutely if, yeah. well yeah. marriage is a compromise it sure is i love your gallery wall over here i love the portrait of lincoln but equally as much i love is calvin your son he is yes uh, uh, yes and i love that and i also just and who is this down here this is me he, he painted that for me for mother's day i love it i love the blue in that and yeah it's just fun yeah it's a collection of things and room to keep adding I was going to just say that. You definitely <laughs> have room to keep adding. And is this, uh, this panel over here, is this, oh, it is just a panel. At first, from a distance with, with Stuart standing there, it looked like it almost might be a door. But uh, it is definitely really an eclectic gallery wall. And look at these gorgeous malachite obelisks. Those are wonderful. Now we must ask where you sourced those. Um, so those, I actually made those. You made those? I did, oh yes. Oh my word. Yeah, that's... You decoupaged those. I did, yeah. And and the framework for them is something... Is you, wood. Is yes. wood. Well, we're definitely going to get into that decoupage thing here using something that I alluded to earlier, which are these beautiful matches. And she's going to show us in another segment how to do that. I see tones of lots of plaid everywhere. I love, I love that. Something else, the, first of all, like I say, there's just so many different things to look at. But look at the toadstool pillow. <laughs> oh, I now, did you make that? No, I did not. <laughs> no, that was a... Um, that was a so purchase, cool. yeah. Okay, that's very, very cute. I love, I'm a girl who loves any kind of plaid throws, and you've got a collection of plaid throws on a bamboo stand. Well, and these doors- Over in the corner. They can open up and fold back, and we have a screen that comes down. Oh, wonderful. So it's nice to have the blankets if we wanna have it a little chillier in uh -huh. here, and we can just cuddle, we can cuddle on those, or we can bring them outside for fall. Yeah, the essence of that indoor-outdoor living that you and I both like. Okay, let's come over here. This, this area is actually rather open, though divided up into, you know, into different spaces. So this obviously is the dining room. Look at this table. 
So tell me about the table. The table was a purchase years ago, and my husband and I, um, we bought it when we lived in a different home, and it was very, very large for our tiny home. And so, but we kept it, we made it work, and um, when we moved, it was just perfect in this space. And we were so excited to, to continue to, okay. to keep it. And speaking of when you moved, you bought this home from your parents. We did. Who used to live here. And you said at that time it was more kind of southwestern decor. And you have it, well, in your own style, your own expression. Yeah. It was rustic and worked really well for their aesthetic at that time. Mm -hmm. But we wanted to change things up a bit and a little, make it a little lighter and a little more cottagey or you know, eclectic. Yeah, 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 and just more expressive of your personality. Yeah. So are you a trained designer? Are you just an artist? Are you, how would you describe yourself? I would describe myself as an artist. I am not a trained designer. I just read a lot and, um, and make mistakes and then try and go fix yeah. them. Yeah, yeah. Or, or travel to wonderful places. That's right, yes. And bring back and try to incorporate some of those touch points into your own home. I'm always and, inspired. And, and speaking of, you called this, when we walked in, you called this your little boost of serotonin. So I'm going to guess that you decoupaged a number of these things. Yes. Wow, <laughs> so fun, so fun. and. There's great fragrance here. It's a very sensual experience. There's quiet music, which I love playing in the background. She's got a candle lit. Is that a Chihuly? It is. I, that was an inherited piece um, oh, wow. from my grandmother. She loved her Chihuly piece. My favorite color, too. And um, so I was very fortunate. It is beautiful, and I'm very excited to have it on my table. Oh, my goodness, yes, and it's just poetic, way that lavender tulip just kind of uses that as a backdrop. It's just those, it's those little poetic moments, I think, that just give us joy. Oh, yes. And that's just lovely. And then you've got a whole bunch of matches, of matches <laughs> because they're just so cool. And you are a lover of malachite. I am too. I do, I like the stone. It's just, I think it's, again, bringing nature in all of those stone elements that there's really a part of my brain that it speaks to. Yeah. And it feels very comforting to have that to where I can see it. Mm -hmm. um, and I enjoy having it out. It was a, it, you know, another compromise that we made by allowing, because we don't have a big family, we didn't need the whole table. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I really wanted to have things that were sitting out that we could view and kind of glimpse and appreciate. And appreciate yeah. So I would say two things about this. Number one, I think it's very, very intentional. This isn't just a hodgepodge of things. I'm going to guess this is a still life that is constantly changing. Mm -hmm. Seasonally, with your temperament, with your mood, with whatever. Um, and it's very reflective of the dynamic of your decorating styles, i.e. your husband and you. So that's my question of the day. If you have made compromises with your significant other, whoever that may be, whether it's just a child that you live with or, or, or whomever, if you have made concessions, compromises, then I would like to know what they are because this has been one of the most creative expressions of that that I have seen and I just, like I say, this is just a wonderful, wonderful tableau that speaks to two different personalities and how they came to some consensus oh, thank you. in your style. Let's take a break here, absorb this beauty and we're gonna move on to the kitchen. Well, you make passage from the dining area into this incredible kitchen which I would, I would guess is the heart of the home. It really is, yes. This is the main room. And you know, the open concept has kind of gone in and out over mm -hmm. the years. Mm -hmm. And I really do, I like the idea of both different concepts, mm -hmm. but it's been really wonderful to have everything happening in this one space. And especially at the holidays when I'm cooking or baking with my son, uh -huh. we can just stand in here, watch TV, yeah. and it's just very cozy. Yeah, it really is very, very cozy. And I think any kitchen that has a fireplace 
is just a wonderful thing. And look here, as any true uh, Chatelaine would have, look, look at this wonderful spread that she's got for us. I love this, love this ice bucket. I have seen this and almost purchased it. In, in the past, but I love, again, it's that echoing the nature and cork and materials and, and just the textures of things. And I just love that. And we are drinking delicious peach tea in these wonderful glasses. Okay, now I feel compelled with practically everything to ask its provenance where you got it. So Leah wanted to know, and these are just like, I, I love the fact that these are textured and it's got this, these raised dots or raised, whatever they are, dollops on here. So do you remember where you got these? I did, I got them at a local um, store at uh, BC Clark. Oh, anybody in Oklahoma will recognize BC Clark anniversary sale. <laughs> but they have some really nice affordable things in their yes, homeware selection yes. along with really high end things. Yes. But they have these glasses and you can get them in all different colors, dots. Oh, wow. And they're just so fun for just... They almost look like little balloons to me. Yeah. The, yeah. Very I, whimsical. I, yes. And Leah also wanted to know where you got this <laughs> fish carafe. The fish carafe is from Food 52, which... I love Food 52. Yes. They yes. have amazing, I mean, all over the board items, and it was just a great find. And then just a, a wonderful spread of pistachios and cheeses and crackers and fruit. Just all very, very, very lovely. So Stuart, if you can, just kind of take in the magnitude of the room. And again, I just, I love the eclectic nature of the artwork. Something that is interesting to me, it, and it seems kind of a recent thing, where lately when I, when I go into people's homes, much more emphasis on the artwork now. I don't know if it was all part of the gallery wall phenomenon, um, which, you know, some say comes and goes. I don't think it's ever gone. Right. And it seems to me that there's much more emphasis on the vertical spaces in both large homes or small homes like mine, much more emphasis on vertical decor and what's hanging there and, and a real important way to sh show your personality and show your interests oh, yes. in what you have hanging on the wall. And, and you are no exception. I mean, the variety of things that you have is fun. It's from different vintages. I see a little bit Art Nouveau there in the light. Tell me more about just, so you find stuff from everywhere. I do, yes. Some of these pieces over here, um, the top and the bottom are my son's artwork from when he was little mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. had it framed to where we can just change it out. Uh -huh. um, the middle piece is an artist friend of my husband's and I that uh, lives in Portland. And this piece um, here, John Byrne of Self Portrait, was purchased in Glasgow in Scotland. Oh, wow. And that was a really exciting piece um, that we found in a really neat um, art studio in Glasgow and um, it just I love traveling because yeah. it gives you just have those pieces with you of your trip yeah, yeah and when you come back they, they have so much more import than they would if you just bought them yes locally or whatever even if it, even if it's not an expensive piece of art if you right. bought it someplace that reminds you of of a happy time I think that's important now I am also a gal as are you that loves a wonderful bar moment and this is just a great, what a great a bar. Great <laughs> so, so tell me about the chest and then the variety of things you have here. The chest was a um, Pottery Barn piece that is, was just a great find. And the bar items um, actually were all inherited from uh, my grandparents. They had all these decanters. And so yeah, I was really excited to be able to incorporate those into our space as um, just to have not only a piece of them, but then also display our barware beautifully. And I love, this is such a great idea sometimes, particularly after, um, after a loved one's pass, passing, or you, there's just all of these things and you're not really sure what to do with them. You wanna have some kind of meaningful use for them. And things like this little cup or whatever it is, and you've got, I, I, these are adorable. Mm -hmm. I've got to have some of these, these little picks. May I touch? Sure. 
yeah, I just have to have some of these. Well, and I will tell you, so that, um, the, the vessel came from my grandparents and then I, al I also kept and took a few other small vessels like that. And then I, for Christmas, I gifted with the toothpicks in there, I gave them to all my friends. Yes, don't you love that? So it's passing yes. their items on. Yes. Along with something they could use. Okay, that is a great and it's tip. it's super fun. Because I did that with some of my parents' things to my very, very special friends. And I had friends who'd done the same thing for me. So my friend Jenny, when her mom passed, she gave me one of her aprons. Oh. And I just thought that was, you know, she, because she could idea. only use so many aprons. Yes. But she wanted me to have something. And I have done the same thing with tablecloths or with you know, beautiful pictures or something, because we can only all use yes. so much stuff, yeah. but it's a way that they know that it has meaning. Yeah. And, and it's keeping them, you're giving them a piece of your, yes. you know, your heart. Yes. And it's bit. especially, I think, wonderful if they knew that person. Yes. If they knew that person, it's, it's especially, it's especially touching. Well, I love all of this. So who is, who is the artist behind Hedwig? <laughs> that would be my son. Okay, that is just wonderful. Yes, a, a Lego Hedwig and obviously also a fan of Harry Potter. And fun little shades. Just, I've got this exact same lamp that I got thrifted. And you know, you're for, you are fortunate that you have this wonderful canvas upon which you can express your personality and your collections and your penchant for maximalism yes you're just really really fortunate and it's you've created a great balance i think oh well, thank you because many of our followers out there are are true maximalists and i've got the tension i feel like i'm I feel the tension between your husband's aesthetic and my own aesthetic, and um, which is probably a little bit more maximalist. But over time, you, we do have to live in our spaces. Yes. And so how much you can have out becomes an issue and how much you can take care of is also an issue. Yes. And fortunately, you have the space to be able to do it. Look at this wonderful table. And this is definitely an expression of just, if you like it, use it. So the tablecloth charmingly does not match the plaid on the cushions or that this also looks like a William Morris pattern. It is, yeah. On the pillows. And you've just expressed yourself beautifully with the, with the flowers and it just, again, it captures a beautiful still life and a beautiful moment. Thank you. I'm a big believer in plaid, it goes with everything. Any color plaid. Plaid is a neutral. It is a neutral. Plaid and is no a neutral. And no matter the color, no matter no matter the you know the tartan print, um, it just goes with everything. So you can use it as a neutral background. So this round table is is giving me ideas. I have well, you've been to my cottage, and yeah. I've got kind of a rectangular oval that makes sense table in my in my kitchen area and I've often thought well maybe I would like a round table better so it's something that that I have the luxury to do because I live in a small space so I can switch things out without yeah. feeling as if it's or thinking it's still an option and it's not always uh, from a cost perspective prohibitive but look at your flowers look at the little tea set look over here I mean these are all just oh, God, I miss the tea set yeah the tea set wonderful candle holders and wonderful tapers. Mm -hmm. Those are stick candle tapers. They're wonderful. And they are, the, the company is really neat. They they make molds of the actual stick, hemlock, um, birch, I mean, all the different types of trees. Then they, you know, from those molds, then they will formulate each of the different uh -huh. candles. And it's just breathtaking. And they burn really well as well. And they, yeah, and don't drip. If I, I wouldn't be able to bear to burn them though. For not, <laughs> I do for, burn no, them. No, no length of time. But why have stuff if you're not going to use it? <laughs>
so this is kind of a wide perspective of your beautiful kitchen and your wolf range. I had a wolf when I was at my, at my other home and, it, and it, it's just beautiful, but more importantly, it's livable. It's, it's very, very practical for you and your nine-year-old son and your, and your husband, I imagine, and also for your night with your nine-year-old son's friends. Yes. Who I imagine also spend some time here working on Lego magic. So this is just a wonderful family home and hearth kind of area right here. And I just love everything about it. I love your candlesticks, your tapers, again, the expression of all your interests. If you want to know what somebody's interested in, you know, look at their bookshelves. Yes. Yeah, the bookshelves are, I really liked to highlight all of the pieces that, I, that we had. Um, in particular, the beetle. So the beetle was done by my husband's friend who is a professional artist in Portland, Oregon. And it was really a special purchase. Um, we uh, went for one of his art shows that he was debuting years ago and purchased the beetle and had it crated and, and uh, shipped to Oklahoma. And um, it's just the black on the bookshelf really just um, gave it a great backdrop and highlights the beauty of it. Um, it the piece is specifically a warrior beetle. Um, oh, and it's wonderful. just such a neat, yeah, it's a really special piece. So which came first, the bookshelves or the beetle? Mm -hmm. The beetle came first. Uh -huh. And at our old home, we had a, a, a fireplace a mantle that we had it on, but the fireplace was kind of a red brick. So it really blended in. Mm -hmm. And so I was very excited when we moved um, to have it showcased mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with the black. And I just, I'm so captivated by your son's artwork. And if, you know, for people who are on a budget, and so many of us are, mm -hmm. it is just wonderful to frame artwork that children do. It and really is. I and we. I was able to frame it in a way that we can change it yeah. out, so mm -hmm. it changes kind of as he grows. Um, I'm able to take, you know, take the back out and and replace it with maybe something more current, or kind of change them all around if I'm wanting to do something in a different location. So it's or a in, a, or in a different color palette. The problem with that is I become so attached to that <laughs> yeah. that individual piece that then I can't bear to cover it up with something new. And then that's how that's how our homes become cluttered, that's isn't it? it? Because yeah. we can't take something away when we add something else on. So that's that's when we embrace layering. That's right. <laughs> layering. Well, this is just really beautiful and more William Morris notes. It is yes up here. I am a big fan of William Morris. He uses a lot of nature. He was mm -hmm. the father of the arts and crafts movement. Um, so he just has, his patterns are so intricate uh -huh. and always some leafy nature component. And, and I'm really drawn by the colors. A lot of his colors were a little bit richer, a little more fall tones, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is kind of something that really speaks to me. Yeah, yeah, and, and because so often they can read almost as a neutral. Yes. Well, this is just wonderful. Uh, Stuart, before we start looking through the window to describe the outside, let's capture that wonderful chandelier over the kitchen table. Now, do I need to ring the bell to alert you that I'm going outside? <laughs> yes, please do. <laughs> not, to, not to potty, but just to gaze. This is wonderful. This is really wonderful. Oh my goodness, that looks like something that was in my QVC line. That is. You uh, have, but there's lots of things that were in your QVC line out here. How yeah. fun! Yeah, that's fun. So many of the things. I wish they were still available, and they're just they're just baskets. not anymore. Yeah. Baskets and yes, baskets plant supports and, and yes. Very fun. Okay, so so many people will not live in Oklahoma unless they can have a pool because. Let's just say it. it. It just gets hot as you know what. Yes. In the summer. And this is really, really wonderful. But in addition, it's just a nice outdoor living space. And it's just lovely. I mean, I love the sound of the water. I love everything about it. So did you make many changes when you moved here after your parents? We did. The, or Primarily landscaping. The pool and all of the structures were set. Um, but we wanted to do, I wanted to do a little bit more sculpture, boxwoods, 
there was a little bit more zero scaping and it was a little bit more of a wild free for all mm -hmm. on the mm -hmm. landscaping mm -hmm. and I wanted it more uniform and a little more color mm -hmm. um, with the green and so and it's been evolving I've had to learn what works where and um, I also try and do only perennials because mm -hmm. I'm not an annual mm -hmm. person mm -hmm. um, I'll admit that so it's been a really really good um, experiment and still and we're continually learning. yeah we're still <laughs> yes. learning constantly yes. learning I love your boxwood balls now do you prune those yourself I do well done you I do and it is a, a lot of work it is a lot of work but but it's also kind of meditative yes don't you think yeah and and I you you've got like French bistro look down here do you guys dine outside very often do you entertain a lot we do uh, both yes so we dine out al fresco a lot and uh, we entertain quite a bit whether it's around swimming or just with friends and have kids over and so having a big space really helps but having a small but it's also small enough that it's not overwhelming right. to maintain yeah yeah um, the yeah. pool i feel like is a good size that it's not overwhelming to maintain. To, to, to maintain. And now you've got a greenscape below there. Is that your property as well? Is that a common It is. Space? No, the, our property even, so the tree line, our property actually goes back. We have almost four acres. Oh my goodness. So wow. it really goes back quite far. It's just all wooded. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's just, it's lovely. Really lovely. Do you grow edibles here anywhere? Do you have a vegetable garden? Or? I do. They're at the, they're on the side of the house in whiskey barrels. Um, I have found that it's easier. I am not a very good gardener when it comes to growing edibles. Yeah. Um, especially in this, we have a lot of wildlife. Right. And so I have found yeah. it's a lot of bunnies, lots much of deer. easier to grow them high yeah. and grow them close to the house because that's where they won't go. Um, we do have some pumpkins and watermelon that sometimes we are lucky and then most of the time we're just feeding but, the wildlife. But you know what, you do what you can That's and right. you, you learn, you know, you walk up to the edge and sometimes you have to walk back. I love the Kiva area that you have over here. And what's interesting is we build a lot of times, I find that people will tell me that they have a pool or whatever for the summer, but then they find that they actually use the rest of the outdoor spaces far more in the fall. Yes. Which is I, the popularity, I guess, then of outdoor fireplaces. Oh, yeah. So, so true. Beautiful Japanese maple that looks wonderful against the taupe backdrop of the siding of your home. The Japanese maple was a, there was a Japanese maple there when we moved in, and then it it passed away as soon as we moved in. So that that was a current um, replacement, mm -hmm. and it is just doing so beautifully. Yeah, it's wonderful. And I can smell the fragrance of your rose just yes. standing here. Don't you love moving fragrance? I just planted a gardenia at my house just so I could have that. I love that. So what rose is this? This is the Zeph Zephyrin Druin. Yes. Okay. Zephyrin Druin. And then on the other side, I have, I don't know the name. It's a coral color. Um, and I just really love the two contrasting. You can't see it as much from this angle, uh -huh. but the two contrasting colors of that coral orange against the pink and that beautiful like magenta. I oh, and look, look at look at how gorgeous. gorgeous that rose looks. Backlit. Yes, it's just just beautiful. Now, yeah. now the popularity of Zephyr and Druin is twofold. One, obviously the fragrance is just amazing, but also it's actually a joy to train because it is thornless. Yes. And and yours has gotten huge. I mean, it really has gotten large. And then you continue continue to have to train it at my former home. I had a I had a large old climbing blush that grew over the, the studio I had in the back and then a Zephyrin Druin that grew over the arbor right next to it. And when it was glorious, it was just absolutely glorious. And then sadly, both of them succumbed over time to Rose Rosette. Yeah. So that's, that's an advantage you have out here is nothing is in close quarters. So you've got really good air circulation. You're not next close 
in close proximity to neighbors who might have roses that they bring in that are diseased. And it's really wonderful. Stuart, can you capture just how beautiful? Yeah, yeah, I got the light stuff on the way. Oh, there. yeah, that rose looks back, backlit by the sun. And I love the color echo there because that apricot rose is tinged in pink, which yes. echoes the color of the Zephyrin Druin. These are things I can speak to you in this kind of language because right. I know you appreciate the same things. Well, and it's really nice. Uh, there's so many online resources that help you with roses because I was a little naive when planting it. And it really has been helpful to kind of study it, study how they function and what they really need to thrive. Right. And they almost are thriving very, they're almost too well, as you can see. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it gets a little crazy. Well, and um, knowing what to do with all the additional tendrils that come oh, out, yes. all the additional canes, it, it is definitely an art form. And you have to have a certain amount of energy. Yes, you do. <laughs> to, uh, you know, and commitment to it. Yes. If you're not gonna, if you don't have the energy or the, really even the wherewithal physical wherewithal to train it or you don't have someone who can then best just grow a shrub rose yes <laughs> otherwise a, a climber can kind of be can kind of be an issue look over here all of these sweet things you've got a close you've got this I love I've got this same Jardin yes form I love that I see lots of things that that remind me of my own garden yes. here these are the only hydrangea that I can get. These are the Incredible, and it's the only hydrangea I can get to work here. I've tried Limelight, and I've tried a lot of other uh, mop heads, and they all just, I, I always give it three times, and then yeah, and then, and then I don't go back. Three strikes, so. and you're out. Well, this probably can handle more sun than some of the others can, and, and it's just, well, it's just all, it's lovely. It's a little dream, and there's a wonderful, breeze today. I love it. And Stuart, let's let's end up on this purple pear tree, purple plum. Uh -huh. uh, 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 peach. Peach, purple peach. I knew it was one of the peas right here and the tiny little fruits, which of course I would be compelled to cut, bring in some of those branches and use them, <laughs> use them in my still lives. Now, before we leave and go back inside, you said you have a cutting garden down here just beyond the fence. Yes. And that's wonderful. I see alliums in there. I see, oh, I see some of the cages that I sold on, on TLC. What else do you have down in there for, and is this a cut, cut flower bed? It is a cut flower bed. And I have the, everything, you know, the alliums are the first to pop up. And then I've got some hollyhock and I have a lot of zinnias, all different kinds of zinnia. And I have some dahlias, lots of different um, dinner plates and the small balls and all different kinds of cutting flowers and I'm, I'm constantly trying different ones um, some some of them work and yeah and the zinnias are a no-fail in yeah. Oklahoma right <laughs> right a no-fail as long as and the deer don't bother them they and do not the rabbits don't bother them they do not I do um, I take um, ivory spring um, Irish spring soap mm -hmm. Irish mist Irish um, Irish spring it Irish is spring. Irish spring is that Irish okay spring. okay and I wrap okay. that in a net and I kind of hang it periodically and it seems and to work. And it seems to work. Yes. I've, I've heard both things, that it does and doesn't work, probably depends on, on your own local critters. But, okay, so here's my next question. Do you really, do you really cut and bring those flowers in? Because so often I'll think, oh, I'm gonna grow these as cut flowers and then they look so pretty in the garden, I can't bear to cut them. I do because they, a lot of the zinnias especially are cut and come again. A lot of the dahlias you cut, and we have such a wonderful growing season here, yeah. as you know. So, I mean, it's great because I can cut, I'll get more flowers in through September and October, mm -hmm. and so it really perpetuates yeah. itself. Yeah. So yeah. I do. I cut all the time. Well, yeah. I'm sure whatever you do with them when you bring them indoors is absolute mastery. Okay, so speaking of, let's go back inside. Well, what a treat this has been. Thank you, thank you so much. But the fun doesn't end, does it? No. No, so we've got one more room to show you and we're going to do a, a decoupage project, but we're not gonna do that today because I think, um, I think we're both a little bit worn out from just 
really taking in all of this beauty and all of these wonderful compositions that you've created. I hope you guys joined the, enjoyed them as much as I did, and we will just meet you back at the crafting table in another video.